this is Vagoshon speaking. Uh, nice to see you again this week. Um, before we go to the making of gasoline, essentially gasoline, you know, for your cars and trucks from carbon dioxide and water, um, I'd like to extend a thank you for um, for the people. Well, actually, there's one specific individual that has commented quite a bit in the climate change video from last week. Uh, he seems to be fairly expert at uh, and did a lot of research, did a, lot, a lot of writing climate change, and we've been uh, a little bit arguing, I guess, on certain concepts. Not uh, about the climate change itself. I think everybody agrees that um, you know from from that, uh, you know, it's pretty irrefutable that um, that we are warming up the planet uh, recently over and above the natural cycles um, uh, of the of the sun. Now, human-made uh, reactions. It's like uh, we're more arguing about uh, whether or not scientists are uh, are capable or able to hide or manipulate data and uh, and publish them to confuse and according to uh, you know financial incentives and things like that. But you know, it's really good discussion. Uh, I hope more people would uh, would join in to that to kind of put their two cents uh, because ultimately, uh, what we want to do. I, I believe what we want to do as individuals is that we want to have a dialogue between individuals versus just receiving information from a mass media, uh, from big organizations that essentially control the, the, the information in some ways. And, um, and in order to make our own minds about things uh, and, and to get to the truth so that and to avoid all the corruption and all the potential uh, financial incentives and angling information a certain way, avoiding certain information, all this stuff that is fairly common in most industries. Um, anyhow, so so thanks a lot for, for all the comments all over the board. Uh, another small comment. I Normally, I would uh, have a comment about the, the cash technology stuff, but I noticed that the Sweden, Swedish guys that have been providing metrics uh, haven't done so yet uh, from, from their meter. Uh, so I'm gonna, and, and you know, I've been following them quite a bit, um, along with others, and I'd like to have full data before uh, before I do my little update post. So hopefully next week they'll have something up. Uh, otherwise, I'll still, uh, you know, have comments based on from different sources and research from different people I follow uh, that are doing experiments from their own built uh, Magrav units, as well as those purchased. Uh, we still haven't received ours, again, um, but anyhow, so. Moving on to making of gasoline, um, just a preface to that, like chemically, this is a more, a more my, my, my field because it's all about chemistry and chemical engineering. Uh, when we burn fossil fuels like gasoline, what we're doing, we're creating carbon dioxide and water. So we introduce some energy to spark the reaction and the, carbon, uh, the, the gasoline, which is essentially uh, carbon and hydrogen, it mixes up with oxygen in the air or in the engine, uh, and then it creates CO2 and, and water uh, with an explosion, right? And the explosion is what uh, you know, pushes up and down the uh, the pistons, and that what drives the motor. Now, the issue with it, as we discussed last week, and that's why I'm chaining with the CO2, another CO2 discussion here, is that we're generating a whole lot of CO2. And that's not only from the cars, of course, there's also a lot of combustion going on in industry and that's spewed into the atmosphere. Of course, we're scrubbing that uh, to a certain degree. We, uh, we use catalysts in the cars from, in the Western world at the very least to eliminate some of that junk uh, and, and kind of break it up into, uh, into nicer gas particles and things. So, so we're limiting the damage. But what's really cool is that when typically when a reaction happens a certain way, you can actually you know, push it back the other way around. And uh, since about the 1990s, um, a lot of labs have been experimenting with with doing just that, like taking the CO2 and trying to make methane or another usable gas with it. And uh, they've been using like huge apparatus, uh, apparatuses uh, and equipment, uh, several stages usually, because what happens is that you, you have to use, well, when you, you want to use water, for example, and, um, and carbon dioxide, uh, if you want to make methane, as an example, is that you need the hydrogen and you need the, from the water and you need the, um, 
carbon from the CO2, which means from the water, you have to split the, the hydrogen from the oxygen. And one of the ways to do that is the electrolysis, but that requires a huge amount of electricity to do that. So why use huge amounts of electricity when you're trying to you know, create an energy source? I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit backwards, um, but it's one way to do it. Right? And there's other ways to do it using catalysts and things like that. And on the carbon dioxide side, well, you have carbon and oxygen. You want only the carbon and to, 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 make, uh, to mash it up with the hydrogen. So you need an, some energy to actually separate the carbon from the oxygen in the CO2. And that requires energy as well. And that's a little bit unavoidable because fossil fuels are made of carbon and hydrogen. So you need to take the oxygen out of those uh, of those uh, those compounds, of the CO2 and, the, and water, if you wanted to go that path. Fortunately, CO2 and water are very available. Uh, they're in the air directly, so they're free. Uh, water is basically free. Even if you, you can pull some from the air, but you can have water sources. It's, it's fairly, fairly inexpensive. So that's the good part of it. Now, the, the big challenge over the last, since the 1990s is like, okay, well, how do we do it with minimal energy consumption? How do we actually do, you know, get that carbon, get that hydrogen out of there, and, uh, but being energy efficient? Uh, because otherwise, there's no sense of doing it. Now, this... Um, I, I, of course, I'm publishing some uh, some links down below, and then there's this team in two, early 2016 from uh, UTA University. Actually, I don't know what UTA means, but UTA that's in the states, <laughs> University of something something. Um, uh, check the link, and you can uh, probably find the university uh, from that link. They um, they figured out a way to do it using catalysts and using light. Light is readily available, of course, it's free. And catalysts, um, if you guys don't know what catalyst is, is usually um, a substance of some sort. It's usually porous. It's a, typically a solid, and you pass through your your reactants into that, and it essentially facilitates or reduces the amount of energy needed to actually create a certain reaction. Um, so this team, what they did is like they're, they're playing around with titanium dioxide, which is, they say themselves, it's not very efficient. I mean, it's efficient for, to facilitate hydrolysis, to, to separate the uh, hydrogen and oxygen from water. That's very, very well known, but it's not a very, a very efficient uh, catalyst, but it, it, but it works. So they're working on better catalysts to make it more efficient, but they're using that. And have a process with uh, with light in a single stage. Uh, that means that, like in a single box, for example, you introduce air, you introduce water, light, and you have your catalyst in there to, to do its job in reducing the amount of, uh, of energy to make the reaction. And what comes out is complex hydrocarbons, not only methane, but complex hydrocarbons, they say, that is very similar to what you have in gasoline. Essentially, from their results, I have to take their word for it because I didn't see anything uh, more detail. So you take that gasoline, you put that back into your tank, into your car tank, and you can run with it. Uh, in a sense, there's a start of, an, uh, of a complete cycle here where you can use hydrocarbons, fossil fuels in your uh, in your uh, in your car, and it can it can have a close an almost a closed system probably in there where you're generating CO2 and water by you know your engine running, and then using the you you introduce that into the single stage reactor with light coming in from the sun and whatnot, and it can regenerate the hydrocarbons and it could come back into your, your gas tank theoretically, theoretically. Uh, because you're, the the same resulting uh, compounds of the burning and, and using a, a burning of the, of the gas are used in the single stage process to produce gas again, so you can cycle it. And uh, right now we don't know how efficient that would be, but it's a start of some kind of cycle like that. Uh, and that's really exciting to me because um, you know that's one way to do it, like doing a cycle, doing a cycle in, in cars, and it doesn't really change a whole lot. Um, in how cars are built, you could add an extra system, feed it back, you know, so that it's easy for the car manufacturers to actually bake that in if it if it ends up working really well um, for applications, not only lab work. Uh, but in addition to that, you can have a, potentially a whole bunch of industries that pop out 
creating a lot of jobs or a lot of uh, opportunities for, for a lot of people where they could essentially be machines of removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere create, to create artificial gasoline. Uh, and that's really interesting because we know that we have too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. There's, that creates some problems like climate change and all these things. It's unnatural. It's okay. It greens up the planet a bit more because there's more carbon dioxide, which is food for plants. But there's too much, so we can create those those industries to to balance things out to actually try to remedy one of the problems, which is carbon dioxide too much in the atmosphere. Uh, take a little bit of water from the river, and you're generating essentially oxygen back into the air to a certain well, yeah, you are, uh, and this. Um, the hydrocarbon chains that can be used to make plastics that are used currently to make all sorts of products that are used to make hydrogen gas as well because we uh we use a process called oh geez i forgot about it um crap all right uh never mind there's a, <laughs> there's a process i forget the exact name of the chemical process but uh, you take uh hydrocarbons like uh, like fossil fuels, and uh, you pass them through a process to to, to get uh, hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is a hundred billion dollar industry uh, in the world. Uh, it's very well used in all sorts of chemical reactions, and it could potentially be used as a substitute to fossil fuels in all sorts of application to burn. Uh, and uh, because it bur hydrogen gas is excellent for burning, it's very explosive. Um, it when you burn it with uh, with with oxygen from the air, just normal burning, it creates water, like only water. Uh, so there's all this potential if we can recycle that carbon dioxide into hydrocarbons. Uh, we don't need the drilled oil wells to burn hydrocarbons as much as uh, before. We can just pick it up from the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, what we've been spewing, all the carbons we've been spewing into the atmosphere, get it back down to usable formats down here on Earth on, on the surface. Uh, and, and, that, and from that source, we can you know, uh, generate more fuels that don't generate carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide, like hydrogen gas, for example. Um, this is only lab, but this is really exciting. A single stage process to create gasoline uh, solves all sorts of chemical issues, potentially uh, industry, new industrials, um, uh, new industries coming out to help clean the atmosphere while being profitable by generating gasoline directly instead of pumping. Etc. 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 That's really really cool stuff. Uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on that um, because I've been. I mean, the, the the energy problem is always persisting, and there's no free lunch about it. If you're, I mean, if you deal with chemistry, you're always producing something, um, and it's it's extremely difficult to ex to be extremely to be pure. Uh, to do something that doesn't cause any uh, any pollution, for example, or any harm. Uh, usually, you have uh, things you need to scrub out, uh, especially in industry, like in those those big chimneys. You have to eliminate some of the chemicals coming out of that, like sulfur dioxide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, uh, you know, um, nitrogen dioxide, and you know all, all these things that are you know fairly common to be uh, to be pushed out of chemical processes. Um, and, and there's ways using some of this new research to actually generate something really clean um, and supplement or augment what we already use to clean up our act as well as new uh, generate new ways, new cheap ways that would work in the current economy uh, to run our stuff, to keep working our technologies, to, be, to move ourselves around, things like that. Really exciting. Um, you know, hydrogen gas, like hydrogen itself, not necessarily the gas, is the most common atom in the universe. And sunlight is abundant. Uh, so the closer we are to these elements, to using these elements in their few pure, pure forms, the better. Because you can't run out of hydrogen. You can't run out of sunlight. And uh, using those to power conversions or to power our stuff is the way to go. Um, there's probably other ways to, uh, to, to get some energies at, uh, at different levels, like subatomic, and we can get uh, discussions into that uh, at other times. But uh, 
really um, what's what's the hanging fruit right now as far as all these things is the chemicals themselves, like the at, at the atomic level. And uh, research like this is really groundbreaking, and I'm really excited about it. They're really excited about it. So let's encourage these scientists from uh, UTA, uh, as well as other uh, groups all around the world that are working on this, so that it can become uh, you know something that is applicable, inexpensive, and even if we're still in a, an industry that uh, is based on money at that point in time. It's okay if uh, they do a good job, then the companies will will see the money in it and they'll push it out to the to the public, push out push it out to us. And as far as individuals are concerned, what we want to do is we want to uh, to encourage this kind of research, encourage the application of this kind of research by uh, by talking about it, by um, by funding it if you're able, and uh, definitely uh, by using the technology when it, when it does come out. All right, cheers to you all. I uh, hope you uh, enjoyed this video and you, you see a bright uh, new future. You know what to do. You have your marching orders. Talk about things. Explore. Make your own mind about uh, different topics. Uh, do your own research. Don't believe me, uh, little old me, that uh, just exposes information for you. Uh, do your own thing and uh, we'll all be good. All right. Have a good time. Enjoy. Enjoy.